So, I'm going to do a little bit of OpenGL. I'll explain it as we go along. By no means are we going to dive deep into OpenGL here at the beginning, but we will get much deeper as time progresses. For now, when I build and run the project, I get this black uh, window, and I don't think it's very interesting. I want to put something on here, and generally the best shape or the most obvious shape, the most common shape to draw at first in OpenGL is a triangle. Okay, and we're, we're going to keep things 2D for a while here. We need to get our math library up and going, and then we'll use our math library uh, later on to do some interesting things. I want to get a triangle on the screen. First of all, let me explain how coordinate systems work in OpenGL window here. So it's about as straight, straight as lines as I can get. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. This should be familiar from algebra classes, hopefully. You did some Cartesian drawings here in algebra. This is positive 1 right here. This is positive 1 in the x. This is negative 1 in the x. Okay, positive 1 in the y, negative 1 in the y. I want to get a triangle on the screen. Let me use white here. Let's just, well, let's get a small triangle. It'll be a spaceship. How about that? A small spaceship. So I'm going to guess this coordinate right here. What is this coordinate going to be? This is Let's say it's 0.1 over in the x, 0.1 down in the y, so 0.1 in the x, negative 0.1 in the y. Right here, this is 0 in the x, but then it's, uh, let's just say 0.1 in the y. Then to be consistent, this is going to be negative 0.1 in the x and negative 0.1 in the Y. So if I can do that, if I can get these, the, these are called vertices or dots, points in space. I need to tell OpenGL to get these dots uh, on the graphics card and then draw by connecting them. So so let's do that. I'm going to actually write this down first. Let's open Notepad. Notepad. Here's a new Notepad. OpenGL is a right-handed coordinate system. Again, something we'll talk about in a future video. But there is actually an importance of what order I feed these vertices down to OpenGL with. And it, it, I can start with any one, but I need to go in the correct order. And so since OpenGL is right-handed, that means i got to... Let's see, I'm using my right hand here. If you're familiar with right hand, left hand, this should make sense. But right-handed basically means I need to give the vertices to OpenGL in counterclockwise order. All right, so let's let's type up here. Let's say the first vertice is going to be 0, the next one's going to be or wait, 0 0.1, then we need to go counterclockwise, so the next vertice is going to be -0.1 and -0.1 maybe I should stay consistent with my formatting. Uh, and then the next vertice is going to be 0 0.1, negative 0 0.1. So 0 0.1, negative 0.1. Okay, let's put this into C++, see if we can get these vertices drawing on the screen. Clear that off for now. I'm going to close this window. Get over here. Okay, protected. We inherit some virtual functions from this QGL widget. Uh, I think I can close this for now. Protected. Void. Control space. Initialize GL. That's a good place to tell open GL about our vertices. I'm going to open the CPP file. Come on, double click. Maybe I should have kept my vertical tab group. Okay, and then over here I'm going to say void my GL window. Initialize GL. So stick with me on this next part. I'm not going to go into open GL in depth here, uh, but I do want to get something up on the screen so we can move around and do some underpinnings in the engine project and then we'll come back to graphics and do some very cool things with graphics. Sorry, graphics are wonderful, a lot of fun. Uh, first thing I need to do is, there's a couple ways to get GL working, the easy way and the hard way. The easy way is to bring in glue, which is, let me, let me see here, I have the website here, it's glue.sourceforge.net, this is where you can download glue from. The OpenGL extension Wrangler library. I could do several videos on why glue is important, what it does, all that kind of thing. I'm going to skip that for now and just bring it in and get it working. I have this folder here. Again, our middleware is hanging out. We have Qt. I also need to bring glue in uh, to our project. So let me go grab that. And I'm going to paste it here. Uh, very small. 
obviously uh, six megs. Okay, it also has a bin included in the lib. But it's, I can't remember if that's the way I structured it or if that's the way it came. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the way it came. Bin has a uh, debug version and non-debug version of the glue DLL. Also the libs again, and then we also have the include, which there's not much to the includes. We we all we need to bring in is glue.h, and then the rest just works out. So again, uh, I have to set up Visual Studio to to use this. I have to set up the include path, the linker dependencies, and then also the bin. So I'm gonna actually pause the video here, just do it offline. Uh, if you need a refresher how to do this, go see the previous video. Actually, I just lied. I want to do this on screen just because I think it's so important to understand how to bring these things in. So I'm going to do it really fast, though. Just hopefully this is a refresher. Sandbox game properties. Let's set up the include directory first since the preprocessor is the first thing that's going to need it. I'm going to click edit. Uh, again, I put it into my project. Dir. Uh, middleware. Middleware slash, what is it, glue slash include. Enter, enter, click OK, and now I can do pound, wait, I don't want to do it here, I want to do it in the compilation unit. Pound include glue, gl, what is it? Glue, did I pick the wrong directory? Glue.h. Okay, and I'm actually going to, well, yeah, we'll leave it below here. Uh, glue.h, okay. And then I should be able to say glue init here. Should get a linker error at this point. Linker, linker, build. 101 errors. Wow. IntelliSense having a lot of issues. Get down here. GL included before glue. Of course. I forgot about that. Glue has to be included before the GL uh, libraries. GL is included here in, in QGL widget. That includes the GL stuff. So this header file I include right here. So I need all this to happen after I include glue.h. Okay, there's actually an include dependency there. So put that up there, build started, and we get linker errors good. I'm saying, I don't, know, I don't know what glue in it is. So we need to make the linker happy. Again, properties, instead of general additional include directories, we're going to linker general additional library directories. Hit edit, go over here. Did I say solution dir? And then I said project dir in the other one. Oh, that's terrible. I want to keep these consistent. Let's keep, let's call this project dir. And then I'll go down here and do project dir again. Project dir up slash middleware slash glue slash lib. Alright, click OK. And then I also need to specify the input. It's going to be right here going to link to glue32. Let's actually stay consistent and link to the debug ver version here. Glue32 d dot lib. So glue32 d dot lib. Semicolon. Enter. Enter. Build. Linker error goes away. Build succeeded. Run. Oh. We need to do the DLL file. Okay. And again, I'm going to just privately, privately deploy this. So bin we're using the debug version of the lib, so the debug version of the DLL is what I'm going to use. Copy, go back to my project files, sandbox game, debug, paste it there, but as I paste, click OK, get that off the screen, I also want to add it to my repo. So let's add the DLL there, go back out to project files. Again, we just added glue, so Taurus SVN, need to add that to my repo as well. Uh, keep all that stuff good. Add in. Good. And I think we're good. Control F5. Hopefully it still runs. And it runs. Okay. Hopefully that was worth a fast minute and a half to two minutes of your life to get a refresher on that. Glue in it. Now glue in it returns an error code saying whether things are good or not. Uh, since this is a sandbox, uh, I could shoot myself in the foot this way, but I think I'm just going to ignore the error code. Ah, well, no, I better not. Let's see. Glue init, what does it return anyway? GL enum. GL enum. Uh, error code uh, gets that. And then I'm going to say, uh, let's just use plain old asserts. Let's go up here. Found include. C assert. And I could do several videos on error handling and what asserts are for versus exceptions and all those sorts of things. We'll skip that for now. I'm just going to assert that the error code 
is equal to zero, meaning all is good. If it's not good, then our program will bomb. And it was good, because our program didn't bomb. Let me show you. If I said it's going to be equal to some other archaic number, that's not going to be true, so our program it will actually bomb. We get a debug up on the screen saying, hey, uh, this assert uh, kind of failed. Do you want to do anything about it? Uh, assertion failed. Error code equals this. They're using some preprocessor magic to get that up on the screen. You can go watch the C++ videos on the preprocessor if, if you want to see how that works. Okay. Whew. Let's go back to zero. All right. Now, I'm going to type up some code. I'm not going to record it. I'm just going to put it up there to get it, our triangle up on the screen. Again, I got this notepad that has our vertices locations there. I'm not going to explain the code. I will put it on the screen so you can pause the video. Just type it in. We'll get into OpenGL specifics and all the deep how to get OpenGL to do some interesting things later. For now, I just want to get our basic game math library up. Any good game engine, I think the first thing that we should start out with is a decent math library. We can either download one or make our own. We're going to do both because I think making a math library is very educational. Okay, so here's the part where we're uh, drawing, or, or you might want to pause and just type this code in. Uh, again, I'll explain this in detail later. Notice I added this vertex buffer ID over here, and then initialize GL. We again we have the glue in it. I gen some buffers, which is a way of saying, hey, make some room on the graphics card for my vertices. Notice I copied from Notepad our vertices into here. Uh, I also, just to make them align properly, I added the negative and positive signs. And to make the compiler interpret them as floating point values instead of double wide floating point values, I suffix these with the F. Uh, and then I send these vertices down to the graphics card using this uh, GL array buffer here. Let me scroll out here and bring this down so you can at least see the arguments. Type this in directly as is. I almost feel really terrible inside myself. Uh, not explaining all this, but it's it's not our our worry right now. Paint GL, okay. Again, I had to override Paint GL. It's a protected function. I clear what's on the screen. I enable some attributes. I set up the pointer to it. I'm skimming over this. If you're lost, that's perfect. Type it in exactly how I have it. There's two floats for every attribute, so each vertex has two floats. Then I just turn around. I say draw rays. It's a triangle. Um, start at zero. And then there's three vertices, so one, two, three. That's what I'm saying down there. Again, I'll explain it in detail later. Control of five. We get a builder. Uh, GL draw arrays function, blah, 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 blah. So GL draw arrays, that's an open GL function that I'm calling or invoking. And in order to have the linker to find that, that's not a QT function, that's an open GL function. I, ha again, have to tell the linker where to find this function. And if you're running Windows, you'll have OpenGL installed already, so it's it's basically visible everywhere. I'm going to say OpenGL32.lib semicolon. That's additional dependencies on input for the linker. Click OK and run it. There we go. Nice white triangle. Okay, well, I want to. This is our sprite. I want to do things with it in the future videos. First things we're going to do is make a math library and do all sorts of crazy cool math using this and uh, go from there.